Hello and welcome to a great, great conversation with yours truly, Robert Ashley, and another great attorney, great sensitive law firm. And of course, we're here on 1040 KGGR. We're broadcasting live on Facebook and YouTube. And once again, it's a Monday. And of course, it's Thanksgiving week. And we thank you so very much for being with us. And we're very, very thankful uh, to have a great, great attorney with us at this time. Attorney Lauren Cadillac is with us. And of course, uh, Cadillac Law is no stranger the 1040 uh, listing family and of course you, you hear them each and every thursday around uh, one o'clock right here on the 1040 uh, but of course we have the very distinguished attorney lauren cadillac with us at this time to talk about some very important topics now many of you know that we've been dealing with covid 19 and the issue of estate planning. We cannot gamble with our eternity. We need to plan what we're going to do. And if you don't plan, then you're planning to fail. Now, also for those of you who have recently getting ready to pay your property taxes, I many of you know that you can protest whatever the county is determining uh, that particular amount. And of course, attorney Lauren Cadillac can help you go through uh, that particular process. Now, also for those of you who own real estate and titles, or are you involved in a title dispute or any kind of thing like that? She can help you with that as well. But once again, let's welcome in, Attorney Lauren Cadillac. And uh, first of all, I want to say a happy Thanksgiving to you, Attorney Cadillac, and God bless you. Thank you for joining us. How are you today? Hi, Dr. Ashley. I'm wonderful. Thank you for that great introduction. That was beautiful. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving to you. I don't know if you remember, but 2020 through 2021 was my year of gratitude. And you know, I'm almost going to go back to it. I tried a new theme this year and I haven't been able to really carry it through, but that gratitude, I just keep going back to. And Thanksgiving is just a great time to remember. I was just telling someone before I spoke with you about my daughter was laughing the other day and I just paused the television and just listened to it. And what a blessing to be able to do something like that, just to hear the sound of my own child's laughter. It's so wonderful. And so I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful to be here with y'all and to be able to serve the KGGR community at large. So, Beautiful. Well, I'll tell you what, tell us a little bit about your, 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 your background, your, your, uh, your, your jurisprudence expertise. And, uh, and, and you, of course, uh, just talk to us about what you have to offer to the 1040 uh, listeners here. So um, I don't know, I'm sure if, if a listener is familiar, they know that uh, my, my background came from real estate, real estate. I had a real estate sales license in Arizona by the time I was 19, because I knew I wanted to be a lawyer, okay? And I thought going to real estate school might help, and I was right, it really did help um, in property law, so I was glad I did that. Um, but what had happened to myself and my family is in uh, 2006, I was hit head on by a Suburban in my small Scion XB. And I was trapped in the car and they had to use the Jaws of Black to get me out. Yeah, and um, I was 24 years old. I was working on my MBA at the time and I was hesitating to go to law school. Uh, I couldn't put any weight on my right leg. Oh, I was in a coma for four days, a four day coma, yep, in the ICU. And I couldn't put any weight into my right leg for over a year. Um, so when I was finally 25 and like learning how to walk again, I, I decided, you know, if I can do this, I can go to law school. And so really that's how I ended up finally getting the kick in the booty to get to where I should be to come serve this community that I belong in. Yes. You know, Oprah has a saying, like she says, you know, God will tell you and you won't listen. So he'll bump it up a notch and then you don't listen and he bumps it up a notch and you don't listen. And then finally, boom, a car hits you head on and you go to law school. Uh, but it's true. You know, sometimes you'll be ignoring what, what God is telling you. And then he'll, he'll find a way to get you to remember real quick. So that car accident um, really like refocused and directed my life. And so when I finished with law school, I went to work for AT&T and I hated it. Uh, but when I came out to, to serve the people, then I knew, that was when I knew I was doing what I should. And just my real estate background, I ended up serving folks who had real estate needs. Mm -hmm. I just kind of went hand in hand. I was already doing property tax protests, like, like you mentioned. And um, I really just, <coughs> excuse me, began my, uh, my service through real estate. Mm -hmm. So it's been important to me my whole life. Uh, really to seek justice, particularly for those who have not seen justice in their lifetime, um, minorities, women, that type of thing. And so uh, 
I recall last year when the protests were taking place, I wanted to go out there. And a good friend of the show, uh, TJ, the computer lady, I know you know her, Dr. Ashley. Yes. She said, nah, girl, we need you in here behind this keyboard fighting yes. this fight. Yes. Um, so while I don't get to go out and fight for racial equality, I get to fight for equity mm -hmm. and equity in real estate. You know, the most important thing in this country is land ownership. We all know that, right? Back in the old day, you had to own land to, to vote. You had to own this to do. So um, retaining that land ownership, mm -hmm. uh, helping people make sure that everything they worked for their whole lives is not just lost or take it back by the government or squandered by fights from children. Those are the type of places that, that I help um, achieve that type of justice, or yeah. at least I feel like I'm helping contribute, you know. <laughs> well, I tell you what, well, once again, everybody, we are talking here with attorney Lauren Cadillac of a Cadillac Law. Once again, uh, some of the areas that they uh, really focus on is estate planning, aging here in Texas, a property tax protest, as well as a real estate titles. And, and what I sense, Lauren, is that uh, you have accepted a calling uh, it seems like uh, you, you realize that God gave you the uh, expertise in jurisprudence. Uh, he, he allowed you to live because that head-on collision, we, we could not even be uh, here talking to you. He, uh, he allowed you to live for a purpose. And I just want to thank you so much uh, for adhering to that purpose and accepting your calling because you could be sitting in an ivory tower uh, up there in Las Colinas uh, or, or up there somewhere in, 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 in Frisco, but yet you're here in, in sunny South Dallas being concerned about the least of these when it comes down to uh, estate planning. And, and in light of the COVID-19 pandemic that we're dealing with, uh, do you encourage everyone to make sure that uh, if something were to happen, if we were to die as a result of COVID-19, our houses would be in order? Can you help us with that kind of planning as we move forward? Yes, absolutely. And, and, and it's so important to Dr. Ashley, you know, a lot of folks say, well, what will it matter when I'm dead? I'll be in heaven, you know, I'll be home. Who cares what happens with what I did, you know, on the earth? Um, I was raised in, in a household that had a Protestant upbringing and our, our whole thing was the better you do on earth, the better you do in heaven. Wow. And so if you're going to sow the earth while you're here, you can't just irresponsibly leave it when you're gone. But really, it's not even about that. What people don't think about is that estate planning is really planning your way back home to heaven. So where it really matters, and we've seen this especially with COVID, is having power of attorney. You know, these folks who ended up in the ICU on machines 10 days, 30 days, whatever, in COVID, who's making their medical decisions? Who's paying their mortgage at home? But, you know, how are they making sure they're coming home to paid bills? That's your power of attorney. That's, those, are the, those are incredibly important decisions. And when we don't have those, at least here in Texas, I can't, I, I don't speak for other states. Sure. But in the state of Texas, if you don't have power of attorney and it comes up that you need someone to make those type of decisions, we have to go to court and file for guardianship. Mm. So um, that is a $6,000 service. Or you could pay 150 while you're, you know, bopping around and awake and conscious and able to communicate with me and save your family 6,000 on the back end. And, and that's, you're not passed away yet, right? This is while you are very much alive to ensure your care, mm -hmm. to ensure that your path home is how you want it to be. And so, so much of estate planning Sure, it has to do with generational wealth, and we're going to protect that. We're going to work on what you want, but it has to do with protecting yourself and your own wealth as well and making sure that you have the appropriate instruments in place to be taken care of. Beautiful. And, you know, for a lot of people, too, when they begin to make those type of plannings, you know, some people are suspicious and spooky. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with planning for our no. future, uh, even in eternity. There's nothing spooky. That's just good common sense. Good common sense. And if somebody needs to talk with you about power of attorney or state planning, how do they reach you? They can call our office at 972-845-1200. Or they can check out our website, which is Cadillac Law, C-A-D-I-L-A-C-L-A-W dot net. 
And I want to tell you, I am superstitious. <laughs> Just, you know, uh, very superstitious. <laughs> the writing's on the wall. That is me. I'm a very superstitious type woman, okay? And um, I still do this for a living because part of my superstition is that if you're not prepared, you'll fail. Yes, indeed. Yes, right? Indeed. And I don't want to fail ever. Ever, <laughs> not even in spirit, okay? I, I don't like that. We like to win here at Cadillac Law. And that, you know, Dr. Ashley, we do litigation as well. Yeah. So you're talking about these soft things and, and I am a kind person, but I'm a, I'm a bulldog in the courtroom too and I like to win. All right, let me ask you about another area here. Take, for example, uh, property tax protests. I mean, we're, we're in the fourth quarter of the year. Uh, we're getting ready to go into another year. I think the fiscal year started back in October. Uh, but can you talk to us about when we get the uh, tax statement from our county? Uh, and of course, we'd say, oh, that's too much. Uh, do yeah. I have to pay that amount? Or can I literally protest what they're taxing me in terms of my house? Well, so you can protest the value they assess on the house. They can't. Okay. You can't protest the, the tax um, the tax is set at the legislature. It's yes, you know yes. certain percent. Da, da, da. If you have an issue with that, you write your state legislator. That's how you protest that. <laughs> right you. now, people are looking at their bills. The um, taxes are due on January 31st, and they're late on February 1st. Mm. So uh, it is too late for that bill to say no. This value isn't correct, mm -hmm. but that bill is going to be due. And uh, if you are having tr trouble paying, you need to make sure if you have a homestead, you can get into a payment plan. But if you don't have a homestead, you better come with that cash in hand. Oh. Uh, yeah. So now what will happen is in April, once we've settled down from giving them all our money, they will send us a notice that says, here's how much we believe your property is worth. That is when we can protest that value. So let's say they believe the property is worth $100,000, mm -hmm. right? And the tax rate is 2.5%. So that's $2,500 a year, right? If I could get the, ta the value of the property reduced to, let's say, $50,000, mm -hmm. the tax rate still remains 2.5%. But now you're only looking at 1250 in taxes in the year because the value they've assessed the rate against is so much lower. Mm. And so we spend a great deal of time here at Cadillac Law doing property tax protests. In fact, I would say that's, I have a lot of favorite parts of my job. I say, oh, that's my favorite all the time, right? I think it's like you said, Dr. Ashley, God told me what to do and I followed it, right? Yeah. And so when I set out and did what I was called to do, I found happiness and joy in it. And there's hardly any of my job that I don't say, oh, I love that. Or, you know, there are some things, don't get me wrong, you got to do math every so often. I'm not a huge fan of it. But otherwise, and property tax protests are part of that for me. When, when neighborhoods protest their, their value, the whole thing goes down and everyone pays mm -hmm. less. So it's, it can be teamwork. Um, it's a great way to interact with the government on a, a very kind of um, small scale, but a very impactful scale to, as, it, as it pertains to our wallets. So uh, keep your eye out on the mail, folks. Your taxes are going to be late on February 1st, so make sure the property taxes are paid by January 31st. Mm -hmm. And then in April, you're going to want to call us at 972-845-1200 so that we can start protesting those values. And is there a penalty, uh, Attorney Lauren Cadillac, is there a penalty if you don't make those uh, tax payments on time? There is, um, but unfortunately, Dr. Ashley, I don't have it memorized. Okay. I work in all of the counties in Texas, and okay. every county gets to do it differently. Isn't that fun? Oh um, and so there are penalties, but mm -hmm. I can assure you <clears throat> that if you have a homestead on the property, you can enter a payment plan for back property taxes, for the taxes that are due on the 31st. If you do not have a homestead, you cannot enter a payment plan. So mm -hmm. some folks, Dr. Ashley, are staying in, uh, you know, what used to maybe be Medea's house, but she's since passed, yes. right? There is now an airship homestead in, the, in Texas, so we can get you homesteaded into a payment plan, but we've also got to figure out and narrow down the heirs and, and the ownership, which is another service that we offer at Cadillac Law. Yes. And also, um, let's see, when, when it comes down to uh, uh, real estate titles, uh, how, how do you approach that? I mean, are there controversies involving titles or how does that, uh, that problem uh, start? All the time, Dr. Ashley. So uh, I know it's wild, right? Like, Part of the reason I like real estate is because 
uh, unlike family law, there's not a lot of tears lost, right? Like it's either recorded mm -hmm. or it's not. It's in paper and recorded with the government or not. There's not you, there's not a whole lot of emotion there. But often what happens is folks will try to take things into their own hands. So for instance, I have a client right now whose auntie had her um, grand, so my client's grandma, auntie's mom, mm -hmm. sign a quit claim deed over to her. Mm. Well, she doesn't know because she's not a lawyer, but a quit claim deed is not even worth the paper it's printed on in the state of Texas. It is, it is ridiculous. I can't even believe we allow them to be recorded, okay? It just quits the claim. It does nothing. So she does this quit claim deed. Then she realizes she messed up. So she does a new quit claim deed, gives extra back to my client's mom. So now my client is a majority owner because this woman messed up on these quit claim deeds. Well, guess what? We got to clean that up somehow. A title company is not going to insure against that. Nobody is going to be able to buy that house if we don't get a clear chain of title and, and figure those things out. So those kind of things happen all the time, Dr. Ashley. And not just that. I mean, I'm talking, um, another client um, purchased a property 30 years ago, yes. paid it off. But before the seller could uh, deed it over, which mm -hmm. they were supposed to when it was sold, that's the law. They didn't right. follow yeah. Uh, but with the seller, before the seller could sign a deed, they passed away. So now we got to go do a quiet title lawsuit because this person is entitled to this land. They paid for it on years. They followed this thing, but they don't have the deed. So now we got to go file a lawsuit in the county, get that all straight now, record that order. Now they're the owner. So those, those things can be quite a pain and there can be many, many issues on a title. Uh, we handle all of them. I like title issues for me. Again, it's a favorite part of the job is kind of the Nancy Drew work that you yes. have to do. <laughs> what did they do? What's going on here? You know, who did this? What day is that? You got to kind of solve a mystery and then you can come up with a solution. And we love doing those type of things at Cadillac Law. Well, I appreciate the uh, Nancy Drew reference. I had to learn. I watch Channel 33 every now and then just to see Nancy Drew, very suspenseful type program. But Lauren, how can people reach you again? How can people reach you again, Lauren? So, Dr. Ashley, you can, folks can give us a call at 972-845-1200. They can visit our website at www.cadillaclaw.net, and that's C-A-D-I-L-A-C. L-A-W. There's only one L in my last name. Yes. Um, and then also the things we've kind of just barely begun to talk about today, I have an entire YouTube full of little videos about that information. So if you're interested in estate planning or what is a ladybird deed or have I been wrongfully foreclosed, there are resources on my YouTube, which is Cadillac Law as well. Once again, and once again, for our listeners on YouTube, Facebook, and 1040, please, we encourage you to utilize this very distinguished attorney. She's anointed to do exactly what she's doing, and uh, she's here to help our community, and we encourage you to please uh, follow through. Now, another area of concern, uh, attorney uh, Lauren, is um, the issue of aging in Texas. Uh, what can you tell us about aging in Texas? Well, we, I, I began to speak about it, you know, a bit ago in terms of power of attorney and guardianship. Um, things to think about as you age, you know, folks, we are living longer and longer and longer. And that is fantastic, right? It's great. We get to experience all these things more and more. But what about as our, uh, our memory starts to deteriorate? Mm. Why not think today while you're like me in your early 40s about then when, you know, you're in the 70s. I know who I am. I know. I know that if I get dementia and I start figuring, you know, get, forgetting things, I'm going to get angry. And a lot of dementia patients do, right? So why not plan for that? Why not choose a power of attorney now that I know will be able to handle me then? Um, you know, someone who's not going to be my child. One thing I ask, I tell people... Mm. Do you really want your kids, you know, I know they're grownups at this point, but they're trying to deal with the, the loss of their parent. Think about who's going to be your administrator. Think about if your child is the best person to make medical decisions for you. Is your child going to put those things in mind? Do you really want your child to have that burden? I don't know about y'all, but well, and my, my son, he's not quite an adult yet, but just because he's an adult does not mean I want him the burden of pulling the plug. 
you know, someone needs to pull the plug for me, but I don't want to, I don't want my poor baby to have to be the one to, to feel like he lived with that or whatever. Those are the really important things to think about as you're aging. Who's going to care for me? Am I going to do home health care? Am I going to, um, you know, live in one of these fancy uh, elder apartments at 19000 a month? Uh, personally, I want to live in one of those. So I'm trying to figure out how I can get an income to, you know, figure that out, uh, to, to have that when I'm older. Those are all things we need to think about as we age. And we spend so much more time as adults, you know, on this planet and we spend so much time aging and there's so many considerations, legal and medical that really just go hand in hand. We help take care of folks with those type of issues at Cadillac Law. Yes. And Attorney uh, Lauren, have you found in, in light of the pandemic, uh, you're having to deal with that even more so or, or what it would be your advice uh, for our aging population in this pandemic era? So um, I actually learned a really interesting fact the other day. The mm -hmm. fastest growing population in America is 80 year old women. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're also the singlest because what's happening is their husbands are passing yes. and then they're, you know, uh, left and moving on. So uh, historically speaking, women have not ever, historically speaking, we have not been facing these issues. We have not been planning for retirement. I mean, you see things all the time trying to get women into finance and women into those kind of things. So those of us who are already 80, are really going to need folks that we can trust to help us with that kind of planning and how do I wanna do that? Um, that's what Cadillac Law is, is here for, right? Is ha figure out what you need based on your life and your situation. Yes. I have one client, she's 82, she skipped in here and ha ha ha, hi Lord and gorgeous <laughs> outfit, makeup, you know what? Yeah. I would think she's maybe 60 with, a, uh, with her energy, but everyone is different, right? So I need to talk to her about her life and her children and how do we want to manage these things. And that's going to be different than your plans, Dr. Ashley, right? And different than mine. Yes, my goodness. Well, Lauren, I'll tell you what, we have a couple more minutes to go. And once again, we are talking here with attorney uh, Lauren Cadillac. And these are areas in our lives that we all need to focus on. Uh, estate planning, don't just risk anything. Don't leave it to chance. Please don't leave it uh, to the uh, uh, probate courts there, if you will. Oh, please. Uh, estate planning and also aging here in Texas. We're all going to age. Let's And also property tax a protest uh, and, and real estate titles. Those are things that we really, really need to know about. And also in, in terms of, uh, let's see, less than a minute to go, a uh, homeowner associations. Uh, what if I'm in a dispute with a homeowner association? They wind up slapping a lien on my property. Can you help me with that, Lauren? Heck yeah, I can. And I would love to because I hate HOAs. And anytime I could go, uh, first of all, I don't know why you're buying a property in an HOA. I will not because it's enough that the government is telling me how to live my life, that this whole group of people I don't even know wants to try to tell me how to live my life. No, thank you. But if you found yourself in that situation and now that group that is coming after you, you come to me. I love fighting those people. I cannot stand them. Anytime <laughs> I have I had a client try to buy a house from this man. He very clearly went into a certain neighborhood yes. and very clearly chose a particular victim. And I got that guy so hard. I got, I said, no, 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 no. Not while Lauren Cadillac's on this planet. We are not going to be playing these kind of games. No, ma'am. No, sir. So I mean, that's. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, the neighborhood that I live in, we have a, 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 a homeowners association. They tell us they're trying to make sure our property is going to stay uh, at the value and continue to oh, is that what they're doing? Yeah, sure, sure. You know, what's crazy is I live in a non-HOA neighborhood and my property has appreciated 300000 over the last 10 without, years. Without, crazy. Without, all those, without the rules and regulations. And exactly. Without people telling me how to live my life, my property still went up in value. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Hmm, what a correlation. Well, I'll tell you what, we have uh, less than uh, 20 <laughs> seconds here. We want to thank you for coming on. How can people reach a Cadillac Law and Attorney Lauren Cadillac? Thank you for your calling. How can people reach you? 972-845-1200 and CadillacLaw.net. Yes. All right. Well, once again, everybody, we have been talking with a very distinguished attorney, Lauren Cadillac. And keep in mind now, uh, she has adhered her, adhered her calling 
And we just certainly want to thank her for continuing to work with us here on 1040. And of course, want to thank our Facebook page, of course, our YouTube channel. And once again, estate planning, aging here in Texas, property tax protests, and of course, estate titles. If you need it, get in touch with Lauren Cadillac. And Lord, once again, we thank you so very much. And may the Lord continue to bless and keep you. And thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. All right. I'm Robert Ashley. We'll see you and have a blessed day.